Today, we will be talking about police violence in the community versus community violence. And I will be breaking this down so that a kid can understand it. But first, I would like you guys to hit the subscribe button and please share this great video with somebody. A police officer acquaintance of mine made it a point to tell me that there are problems in all local police agencies. But he said their problems are pale compared to the problems in the community, especially if violence is the subject. And then he told me, no need to ask me, just take a look at your friends and all the answers you need are right there. So I did even better. I took a look at my friends over the past 40 years. And then I took a look at a new friend that I have. And he has the street drug dealing, you know, about that life type background. And we looked at both groups. And this is what I came up with. So over the past 40 years with my friends, we haven't had much problems with the cops, but when we do, it's the end of the world. Man, it made me get out the car and put my hands down and spray my legs. You know, we make it sound like it's the end of the world. There are four simple things that all of us have done that have kept us living a normal life. Number one, we all have said no to excessive alcohol use, and we've said no to the use and selling of illegal drugs. Number two, we all know how to communicate and cooperate. So when our parents were telling us, or the elders in the community were telling us, hey, if these cops do what they say, or well, they will kill you. We believed them. Number three, Make sure that your license is always valid. And this is why a valid driver's license is equivalent or more than a GED, a high school diploma, and maybe two years of college. That's how important a driver's license is. And number four, have at least the minimum insurance required if you drive. Now my friend, the X Street dude, had a picture of himself and about 40 of his friends, age 15 to maybe 21, from back in the 80s. And of all those guys, maybe four or five of them are living today. He said, see, back then we were making a lot of fast money and doing even more dumb things. The last things on our mind was trying to abide by the rules. Today, in terms of the males especially, 30% of them will spend significant jail or prison time. They represent the anti-society, anti-social, sociopaths of our community. And they normally die at the hands of each other they get killed by good citizens that are protecting themselves. And lastly, they get killed by the police. But there is an interesting fact about this non-conforming group that I have to mention. The neighborhood death rate, them killing each other, is directly connected to the amount of positive male role models the leader has had in his life. Now, all these neighborhoods have a leader. That leader will broker peace because he doesn't want to hurt his community with all the unnecessary deaths. The statistics state that for every one million people in the black community, the police will kill Six, but in Philadelphia alone, they say that one in 67 black males will be hurt or killed by gun violence. 
If you look objectively at the police violence that happens in our community, it pales the violence that we bestow on each other. 